So 70% of what we learn takes place outside of the classroom. Much of what we learn it takes place outside of the classroom. So this is a good example. If someone watches this video and they're not sure about what informal education is, watching this video they can get a sense of or learn a little bit about what informal education is. How we learn or how children learn through play or through um, playing with their friends in a playground. They might learn better how to balance or how to ride a bicycle or how to enunciate a word through conversation with their parents. So there's a lot that takes place outside of the classroom that develops who we are as learners. And it's also important to recognize that so that as parents and educators, we take advantage of the informal learning environment to teach. So as a parent, some of the things you can do to help uh, your children uh, benefit from the learning opportunities in an informal learning environment is one, to acknowledge that there are opportunities for learning in the informal or um, outside of the classroom. Uh, it really depends on, I think, where your interests and where your children's interests lie. Um, I'm not sure how old they are, but students, I mean children, show interest in various uh, things. So if your son, for example, has shown interest in playing with the piano or musical instrument, that is an informal learning environment where that you can nurture him or her in and help them, uh, help them, uh, help, help give them instruction in that area. Uh, and sometimes that's done through video or maybe hiring a teacher or an instructor to come to the home and, and, and nurture some of their interest and skills. So I would say one of the ways is to definitely nurture the skills and interests that they have already um, uh, exemplified some interest in. So engaging a student outside of the classroom who may not be, uh, who may not appear to be engaged in the classroom is, that's an important point, an important question. I would never advocate for the informal learning environment to replace the formal classroom instruction. My opinion and a best practice would be to bridge those two areas. It's most important and I think learning takes place best when both the formal instruction and the informal instruction work hand in hand. So my response to that would be for the parent to work with the faculty and the instructor. So it goes back to the old adage that it takes a village, right, to raise a child. So there's, it's, it's, it's imperative, I think, that both the faculty or the teachers work with, um, work with parents uh, to develop uh, curriculum or to develop engagement activities around where the students' interests and uh, needs and, and, and interests are. I think you have to have that communication. I, feel, I find that some students become disinterested in classroom instruction or informal education because it's mandated, right? When, you, when, when, when students or when people feel that you must do this, and this is the only way it can be done. You must attend classes, you must, when things are mandated, it, 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 it's difficult or they, they sort of push back, right? Because sometimes they're at that age where they're challenging um, sort of structures. So when they feel that it's mandated, uh, oftentimes they're not appreciating the opportunity that they're getting from, uh, from classroom instruction. So I think this is a, a particular place where the academic side of the house and the faculty and academic affairs can work with the student side of the house, student affairs, to sort of bridge, bridge the gap and develop co-curricular programs that enhance what's happening in the classroom. So, for example, if there's a history course with a particular lesson in 
X period in history, um, uh, enhancing that instruction with a video series uh, or a lecture series or a roundtable discussion where students take a leadership role in that topic outside of the classroom to supplement their instruction helps both the academic instruction in the classroom and the informal learning opportunities that take place outside of the class. How can a university uh, mandate students to do things outside of the classroom when there's so many other competing life needs that a student has to face, like uh, parenting a child or children or working so that they can pay their rent. It's really difficult to, um, uh, th there's no one way of doing that. There's no silver bullet. Uh, but I think that um, some of the ways to do that is to uh, engage the student where they're at. Learn about what are the things that the student has interest in outside of the classroom. Oftentimes students are in church or they may have, um, they, may ha they may do community service, they may um, be parent, uh, they may be part of the parent teachers organizations at their, at their children's schools. So finding those areas where they're engaged outside of the classroom and using those experiences to enhance classroom instruction through service learning or through community service is, uh, is, is, is an easier, uh, uh, more, it's easier to negotiate those uh, opportunities with students so that they see them as opportunities rather than mandating um, uh, experiences for a grade using the students' experiences that are already taking place and just helping them understand, change their paradigm that what they're doing is actually learning and what they're doing actually can relate to what's happening in the classroom. So rather than making the student's life fit into the classroom, it's helping them see that what's being taught in the classroom is actually taking place in their lives. So it's it's a little it's kind of flipping um, those experiences so that they understand that their life experiences uh, fit what instruction is taking place in the course or in the classroom. Tips for engaging students outside of the classroom. Very challenging question, uh, but I'll take my best shot at it. I think that engaging students, I, I mean meeting students where they're at. Um, because we're all individuals and we all have different life experiences. So acknowledging and meeting students where they're at in their life experiences is one way of, I find, has been helpful in engaging students. Um, acknowledging their life experiences, recognizing that they have challenges in their lives, and then devising uh, activities and programs that enhance those experiences is, is one tip I would suggest. It's customizing in consultation with the student. So rather than me as the administrator or the faculty dictating to you what you must do in order to realize your academic aspirations, we work together. You're involved in the discussion as a student. You're involved in the planning of these um, learning outcomes because you know what's happening in your life better than anyone. So customizing with your input, with your feedback, and together coming to, uh, to a plan of action to realize some, um, some learning outcome. Absolutely, you're, you're involved in the creation of your own experiences and curriculum. It's meeting them where they're at, one, but two is involving them in the discussion. Uh, there's, um, uh, uh, you can look up uh, Kenneth Tobin, and one of the things that uh, Dr. Tobin discusses is co-generative dialogue, involving the students in the discussion so that they're co-creators of a program 
and if they're invested, if they're involved in the discussion, and if they're involved in the creation of these experiences, then they're invested. And once they're invested, they have more reason to uh, follow through. So tip number one would be meeting them where they're at, and tip number two would be uh, involving them in the discussion so that they're invested in the experience and the outcome. Make the experiences meaningful, right? In other words, the student has to be able to see where the value is in this experience or in this informal learning activity. Uh, sometimes as faculty and as administrators, we don't do a great job at communicating what the, uh, what, what the outcome will be. And it's hard sometimes to see, so it's hard sometimes for the student to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It has to be meaningful. They have to know that what they're investing their time and energy in has uh, a, a, a relevant outcome to their life. And um, this helps them to prioritize and, and, and it helps them to uh, 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 really set their values. And if they understand and if they see and if they believe through, uh, through involvement in the discussion and co-development of the experience, then they are more likely to be engaged because they understand or see and believe in the outcome that will uh, uh, hopefully be realized. Mm. College, for most students, is uh, sometimes seen as the opportunity to get a degree and then get a job. However, informal and co-curricular experiences enhance the classroom experience and help to develop the whole person, right? So the a holistic approach to the development of, this, of the person is what I think uh, co-curricular programming is all about. Really enhancing what's happening in the classroom and using that to develop the, 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 the full student, the full student with experiences through service learning, through reflection, through uh, community service. And when you go out into the workforce, every employer is going to expect you to have had good grades and to have um, a degree. But it's what you do beyond that that really gets you um, the job. So if you can exemplify that you've, uh, that, that you can manage a budget because you've done so as the student government president, managing over a hundred thousand dollars as student council, or, um, uh, participated in developing a conference, or spoke at a leadership roundtable discussion, all of these soft skills are transferable and enhances the holistic uh, person so that they're more marketable and they're more prepared for the workforce when they graduate and all of that enhances the academic degree. What you find in our economy today is two schools of thought. The school of thought which is we don't need a college degree because there are no jobs out there anyway. So why waste time and money going to school if there are no jobs? The other school of thought is you have to um, have a college degree in order to move forward or to uh, improve your socioeconomic status. My perspective is that a college degree never hurt anyone, right? Improving your knowledge, enhancing your opportunities to learn more, having the college experience and developing holistically and developing um, uh, critical thinking skills, etc. in an academic inst institution never hurt anyone. I mean, I can't think of it ever hurting anyone. So um, uh, finding your way 
to college and getting an associate's degree will do nothing but help you in the long run. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's my opinion. Um, a college degree, if I had one phrase for uh, anyone, it's a college degree never hurt anyone. So, go to school and um, take advantage of the uh, academic institution. So, a college is, uh, or a college degree is an investment. So, just like um, you would hopefully manage your monies on a weekly or a monthly basis in order to manage your finances, in order to pay your rent and utilities, etc. I would say that's the same way you have to manage your uh, 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 finances for uh, higher education. Um, so, uh, myself, I'm not deep in debt for uh, my college degree or for my advanced degrees because I took the time to manage my finances before investing in higher education. Finding the right scholarships, finding the right internships that help subsidize the expenses that I pay working part-time, it's all a sacrifice, it's all an investment, and um, if I can't afford um, to attend uh, Ivy League school that's charging me $60,000 a year, then I may not choose to do that. I go to an elite public school, which is more affordable. But taking advantage of the uh, opportunities to earn a scholarship um, for whatever reason is something that has to be a part of your planning. So planning in advance is a key to uh, doing well. I'm very interested in the community college institution. A lot of students today, about 25% of families that earn over $160,000 a year send their children to uh, public two-year colleges so that they get that foundation in a community college and also save money at the early stages of their um, college uh, in post-secondary life so that the investment um, later is made at the elite two years or uh, city university or Ivy Leagues later on. Go to college and you get a degree in a discipline and find that you're not employable for whatever reason. Um, most of the time it's because of the um, economy. This is, so there's no easy answer to that, right? But um, in order to improve your chances for success in a career, my suggestion is to develop those skills that enhance your academic degree outside of the classroom, right? These soft skills, these informal learning environments that we've been discussing, like uh, public speaking, like uh, leadership, so that your degree is flexible enough so that, so that your overall education um, and that your overall development has some flexibility in the workforce, right? Those transferable skills that you may not get in the classroom, but you can get in student affairs, in, in student leadership, informal co-curricular programming, can be the skills that get you the job. Um, everyone, no matter what career you're in, needs to be able to speak well. Everyone, no matter what career you're in, needs to be able to write well. Everyone, no matter what career you're in, needs to exemplify leadership in critical thinking, etc. Oftentimes, you're not getting those specific skills in the classroom, but those soft skills are learned informally outside of the classroom generally and improve your opportunities for employment. So, so uh, co-curricular life or informal uh, learning environments uh, may be an opportunity to enhance skills that can improve your uh, chances for employment. I, I agree with that. That's, uh, um, that is a 
I've seen that to be true in my experiences.